Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C Sharp and today we're going to be learning both timers and one of my favorite things, maybe my favorite thing, random numbers. So let's get started. Let's get timers out of the way. Okay, so I made a label here that says you have 30 seconds. So it's kind of like a warning. Label time, that's what it's called. BTN start, and BTN generate. Okay, so generates the random numbers so we won't be using that now. So let's get into our start. Okay, so what are uh, timers used for? Basically, timers are built-in loops. It's a piece of code that will keep looting, l looting. Oh my goodness! I hope they don't. Uh, looping when you st uh, call that function, and when you tell it to stop. So let's figure out how you go about doing that. So first of all, let's actually create our timer. So you'll start at the top for common controls. Scroll down to components and hit timer. And let's hit anywhere on your form. It's not a GUI element that you'll see. It's off screen right here. And before we double click it to see the code, let's change it up here. So I'll call it timer remaining and the intervals of which it'll uh, go through the code. So this is milliseconds. So 1000 milliseconds is one second. So let's double click our start. I think I already did. And double click this. So now we can see both the pieces of code. So, uh, what do I want this to do? So when we click this, let's have it say 30 seconds remaining, and after every second, it decrements to the point that it gets to zero, and then a message box will pop up saying out of time at the same time as stopping timer. Let's go back in here. So in order for us to create, uh, to represent this number going down each one, we'll have a variable, let's call i. And in order to maintain its value inside that function, it has to be static. So let's create static int i is equal to 0 right there. And i will have to decrement each time in this. So if we want to keep changing it, let's create an if statement. The reason why I'm creating an if statement is because I want it to say one second remaining when i is equal to 1. I'm sorry, but I, I'm... I, it can't it can't be it can't be wrong it's got to be right i'm just one of those people that it's got to be perfect so i'll throw in i dot two string whoops and then seconds remaining and we'll have an else if and then we'll get this i'll copy and paste second and when i is equal to one and an else and this is where we're going to stop the code so before i show you how to stop the code let me show you how to start it so in the btn start all you do is type out the name of this so it's tmr remaining there we go dot start yep it's literally that easy now um, if you now in order to stop it you could just make a stop button which is probably what a typical tutorial or in class will show you but um, bear in mind that in a situation like this which is a more likely scenario that you would use a stop button you would want to make sure that you don't do this don't reset your oh I didn't put it to 30 I want to just start at 30 and then go down don't reset your eye here because that means they could hit the stop if they only have a stop button and all it does is tmr remaining dot stop uh, if you reset the value in that function or here what will happen is they can the user can abuse it they can uh, if they can't figure something out or they can't do whatever your application is telling them to do they could just hit the stop and then start again and their timer starts over and that's kinda not fair so don't do this there we go so down here the first thing you need to do because for some reason it doesn't work otherwise is to stop make sure that this is the in your else statement make sure this is the first thing if it's any of the if, if any of the below code comes first then it'll still keep looping through everything so that's not good so the next thing I want is label time dot text to equal I want the label to go back to what it originally was you have 30 seconds so you have 30 seconds and I don't know why I have the H lowercase 
it should be capitalized, oh well. Then I would like a message box to appear, whoops, dot show, and it says, you are out of time. And then maybe like a, too bad here. And what else? And what else do we have? Icon dots. Let's go. Yeah, let's go exclamation. It's a good one. And we, we should bring it down so we can see all the code. There we go. Sorry for the lack of talking. And the last thing you want to do is now at this point, since now you know i is equal to zero, you can actually set it back equal to thirty, back to the top. So that's fair. And outside of all this if statement, we'll be decrementing. So i minus minus. So each so every time it will hit this i minus minus and decrement by one. So I think this should work. So let's start this. So I click start. And there we go. Oh, 30 seconds. Why did I make it 30 seconds? Okay, what to talk about? Oh, random numbers. So I could just tell you some examples of, uh, or just a big example of when you'd use a random number, and that's inside a video game. What I did in my Visual Basic tutorial, and what I'll probably do here, is the accuracy of an attack in, I don't know, Pokemon hitting its foe. What's the chance that it will, and what's the chance that it'll do a critical hit? Ooh, let's watch the S disappear. Watch. <laughs> See, and then the label went back to normal, and it says you are out of time. Too bad. And then if you, and then, and because when uh, the I went back to thirty, if you click start, it's able to start over again. So that's really, really cool. Okay, so now let's get into random numbers. So let's learn how to actually create the random number now. So in order to create a random number, we're gonna have to access the random class. Now don't worry, we're not actually creating our own classes. It's just like when we uh, learned how to create multiple forms. We had to create an object, right? Instantiate an object using the, the form class. So here we're going to have to do the same. So it's predefined classes, don't worry. So type out random. It's pretty easy to do. Then the name that you would like to give your variable or your object. So I'll call it my rand. And I'll set that equal to a new random object. There we go. And in order to set a random number, what you could do is, well, let's have a message box pop up. Dot show. And that's for the string, the text message, let's have it say my rand dot. And then we have three different things we can do next, which produces any random number, any positive random number. Next, the bytes, which produces bytes. I'll show you how to do that, even though I don't know when you would use that. And then next, the double will produce any random number between 0.0, .0 and 1.0. So let's go with next. Since it's a number, make sure you have your two string. And let's just call it output. There we go. I'll click save. And I'll click generate. So, whoa, that's a huge number. Whoa, these are massive numbers. Well, yeah, well, believe it or not, you can actually set the boundaries of these if you want. So if you wanted to look for percentiles, which is 0 to 100, you could put 0, comma 100 for the parameters. And you'll only get random numbers in between those. So if I click generate, 92, well, that's a high number. 64, 2, wow, or 99, wow. Yeah, wow, we really got some uh, high and low numbers there. So that's how the my my rand the the next will work. Now for the next one, I would like to show you is probably oh, I'll guess I'll show you the next double. Is that what it was called? Yeah, next double. I'll click save. Let's check check this one out. So I'll click generate and zero point one one three three. So these are pretty big numbers, but notice how they're not whole numbers. They're massive decimal numbers. Just ri ridiculous, I guess you could say. So that's what the next double does. It, d it does pretty much what we did with the 0 to 100, except it had a bunch of decimal numbers. So instead of whole, so it's more complicated than it needs to be. This is more complicated than it needs to be. 
I could just go with the next from 0 to 100. Okay, now I'm going to show you the bytes. So let's figure out how that works. Uh, so basically, just type out something like my rand, and you could put down like next bytes or something. And, well, and we're going to have to pass in a byte, basically. So what byte should we put in? Well, it needs to be an array. Notice here where it says, fill, see, look at the top where it says, fills the elements of a specified array of bytes with random numbers. So we're going to have to make an array of bytes now, I guess. So, I've never done this before, so let's see if I do it correctly. So, bytes, um, my bytes is equal to new bytes. How many should we have? Three? Let's not do too many. And let's throw my bytes in there. So is that going to work? Okay. So we threw in our my bytes array in there. And let's print that as a string. So it's my my bytes. We'll want to print my bytes, I believe. So my bytes. Is that going to work? I click save. Run that. We generate. We get system dot bytes. Well, those aren't the bytes. So, we're trying to convert this to a string, but this isn't working. So, there's a different way we're going to have to go about that. And that's using the bit converter. I've used this thing before, um, but I really... I, I guess I'll show it off to you because... Uh, because, well, you'll probably end up being end up using this. So, we'll have uh, bit converter dot to string. So, I'll cut this. Cut back. And we're going to have to paste this guy in there, my bytes. And there we go. So we have to use the bit converter. So we're not going to use the converter.toString. We have to use bit converter. So you notice how usually I've just used converter.toString like this. Cut. But that's not going to work now. So we're just going to use bit converter instead. Or I didn't use converter. I used convert. Sorry about that. So, but we're going to have to use bit converter. So let me run this and see if that works generates and now we get our bit now we get our bytes basically so so that works okay so let's go back to random my rand get rid of this and let's show you how I make my kind of Pokemon kind of figuring out what it, what they have or whatever so we're gonna want to set this equal to a let's just get rid of all this let's create a variable called int chance the chance that it actually hits someone is equal to my rand dot next whoops and the boundaries are 0 to 100 so chance will now be equal to whatever that number is so let's create a bunch of if statements so I'm gonna cut uh, I'll just I'll just delete this so if else if and an else so the else will be a message box dot show that si says your attack missed. The if here will be if my rand is or no chance excuse me is greater than let's say sixty, then we'll get a hit. Whoops. Hits. Let's call it output. There we go. And an else if. And then we'll have two different arguments. We'll have if chance is, let's say, greater than, I don't know, 40. And chance is less than 50. Then let's say we get a copy, paste, critical hit. So what we're doing is we're, f so from whatever random number is generated from between 0 and 100, we're placing inside this chance variable. Then we're checking to see what the number could possibly be. So there's a total of a 60% chance of it hitting from 40 all the way to 100. If it's uh, not... So if it's not between 40 and 50 or greater than uh, 
or excuse me, 60, greater than, you're equal to, there we go, so now all of them will work, then it says your attack will miss. So let's try this really quickly. Your attack missed, your attack missed, hit, hit, and I'm running out of time, your attack missed. Can I oh, right over time, but I'm still going to edit this so you can see it. I got it.